Uncle Tom's Cabin was originally written as a newspaper series in 1851 by Harriet Beecher Stowe. It was published again as a book the following year. So why was this book so popular? Over the next few videos, we're gonna take a look at Uncle Tom's Cabin, what it is, and why it had such a huge impact on the world. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at a summary of the novel itself. The Fugitive Slave Law had just been passed, and so the debate around slavery was at its strongest around this time. This story was written to expose the horrors of slavery. It follows two slaves, Uncle Tom, of course, and Eliza Harris, both the favorites of their master and mistress. Both had families, and both were faced with the choice to run away or not. Uncle Tom is the head slave on the Shelby plantation, and his wife is the head cook. They have two young sons and one baby girl. They became Christians about four years earlier at a camp, and Mr. Shelby, their master, has trusted them with everything on the house ever since. Eliza Harris is the personal maid of Emily Shelby, the master's wife. She's about 25 years old and is married to a man named George Shelby who works at a factory nearby. They have a son named Harry who is about four or five years old. The Shelbys have a son as well who's 13 years old. His name is also George, but we'll call him Young George for now. He spends a lot of his time at Uncle Tom's cabin, playing with the kids, teaching Tom how to read, and sometimes joining them for their weekly church meeting. Young George is a strong Christian. Raised by his mother to treat slaves well, he promised Tom that he would free all the slaves and hire them again as servants instead. But unknown to young George or his mother, Mr. Shelby is in a lot of debt to a man named Haley, who's a slave trader. Shelby has to either sell the house and give up all of his slaves to another master, or just sell a few of his slaves and save the house. Uncle Tom and Eliza's son, Harry, are chosen to be sold. Eliza overhears what's going on and decides that the only way to protect her family is to run away with her son. So she takes him out of the house quickly and goes to Uncle Tom's cabin to warn him. But Tom decides to stay, believing that if he ran away too, the debt wouldn't be settled and his family would probably be sold anyway. So it's here that Eliza and Tom's paths split. Eliza runs away, giving up her life in order to save her son and his freedom. Tom gives up his freedom in order to save his family's life. The next morning, Haley comes to collect his slaves, but finds that Eliza and Harry are missing. So he chases after them, but with the help of Mrs. Shelby and a few of the other slaves, doesn't reach Eliza until she is about to cross the Ohio River. Desperate to get away, Eliza jumps onto the half-frozen river, leaping from block of ice to block of ice until she reaches the other side, leaving a trail of blood from her frozen feet. Haley can do nothing but stand there and watch on this other side of the bank. If this is sounding a little familiar, it's based off of an actual story pulled out of history by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Our very first video was on this one, if you want to check it out. We go now to Tom. Haley sends others after Eliza and takes Tom further south on a riverboat. Here, he meets a young girl named Eva, who actually sees him as a person, unlike everybody else on the boat. During their trip, Tom saves Eva from drowning, and at her asking, her father decides to buy Tom off of Haley. Meanwhile, Eliza is making her way to Canada through the Underground Railroad. Abolitionists find her husband as well, who's also on the run, and they're reunited. They make it to Canada in a few weeks. Tom, on the other hand, is still a slave, but he's again promised that he'd be freed. But Eva and her father die, and Tom is sold again this time to a man named Simon Legree, who's a hard master and beats Tom simply because he's a Christian. Cassie, one of the other slaves, drugs Legree and tells Tom to kill him, but Tom decides that they should run away instead. Cassie agrees, but Tom has been beaten quite a lot and he would only slow them down. So he tells Cassie to run with another slave. When Legree wakes up, he gets his men to beat Tom even more, thinking that Tom knows where Cassie is, but Tom doesn't give in. At around this time, young George shows up, wanting to buy Tom back. George had fulfilled his promise to Tom's family, freeing them and the rest of the slaves on the plantation. But it's too late for Tom. He's dying of his wounds. But he is satisfied, knowing that his family could be safe and free because of his sacrifice. 
We go back again to Eliza. She, her husband, and their son have been living free in Canada for a couple of years. But then something unexpected happens. Eliza's mother also escapes slavery and joins the Harris family in freedom. Her name is Cassie. Yeah, that's right. She is the one that Tom convinced to run. Two slaves, one who ran from slavery and the other who endured it. Both received kindness. Both endured hardship. This is what Harriet Beecher Stowe wanted to show her readers. Slavery is an evil and is unkind to all involved, but we can do something about it. Why was this novel so popular? It was fictional, but not completely untrue. Harriet Beecher Stowe based all of her stories off of true things that happened to real people. And you can click on this video where we do a complete analysis of all the stories, fictional and their origins.